Boa noite a todos. É um prazer estarmos aqui participando do oitavo fórum da Política de Segurança Alimentar, do Pacto de Milão. E vamos então para a última sessão do dia de hoje aqui nesta sala. Que é... Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, our session on public policies of food security and health. My name is Valdo Frutuoso, and this is a vision of Fio Cruz, the Osvaldo Cruz Foundation of Rio de Janeiro. So I'd like to invite you all to take a seat. Professor Denise de Oliveira Silva, researcher and vice director of our regional uh, and Professor He Charles Martins da Silva, researcher at the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, uh, and the Professor Leonardo Esteves de Freitas, also a researcher from the Observatory of Sustainable Territories, Healthy Sustainable Territories of the Bocaina. And they will be then closing, they will be speaking in our closing session. We're going to try to, given the lateness of the hour, we're going to try to have a more concentrated debate, discussion, and we'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation and the partnership in the development of this session, whose title is uh, Public Policies of Food Security and Health, a vision of Fiocruz. With no further ado, I'd like to thank Hishals Denise for having accepted the invitation, and I'm going to give the floor to Denise, who is going to be our first speaker in this session. Denise, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. It's always very interesting to be an event such as this one. There was an expectation for an exchange, but the whole session was delayed, so we are not able to have this. But this is what we, for us, is important around Fiocruz's vision regarding food security and health. The first issue that uh, seems to be important is uh, uh, when we state that this uh, hegemonic contemporary uh, food uh, system demonstrate uh, a failure in its development. We have worked uh, in different Fiocruz units and given a critical analysis, these corporate uh, contemporary systems have generated wars, uh, social inequalities, and climate problems. And since we are an institution of uh, the health sector, it is quite clear that the consequences of all this will affect health, generally speaking. And in this uh, field uh, where Fiocruz works, and uh, the increase of nutritional and food insecurity, we see 33 million people who live uh, in nutritional and food insecurity presents to us a very important uh, perspective of analysis uh, given uh, nutritional and food insecurity. And uh, where do we draw the line? I mean, what do we believe is important uh, here? We embrace some perspectives. First of all, we imagine that we can develop as a strategy in the field of health, namely in promoting nutritional and food safety, the development of healthy and sustainable uh, territories. A little of what you're going to hear. Two different experiences that prove to us that this path that communicates with the Agenda 2030 and other international agendas has been an important uh, pillar for the Osvaldo Cruz Foundation. This has been angered with the different institutional actions that are developed in most units. There are 11 units where that uh, develop with different characteristics, but all of them working around health. Uh, 
that uh, present a series of important activities in order to ensure health uh, should be developed not uh, under the biomedical classical vision, but of an action in the territory. I think that would be the first lesson learned. And within this, there are some dialogues, certain political dialogues that uh, portray the histories of uh, the territories. The territory is a live uh, being, a live uh, entity with its dynamic, and this has expanded to us and presented us some pointed for us some uh, paths to follow. First of all, that we should act uh, following uh, the science of a citizen, of citizenship. The population that is in that territory should take those problems and solutions important for themselves. So a health healthy, sustainable territory exists in this way. Another important uh, pillar that we have learned, given an enormous uh, dilemma that uh, the Brazilian society has lived, is uh, the uh, dissolution. We used to be a country that was considered a model for different international agencies. And today, the dissolution of the National Council for Food Security and other, uh, other agencies show us that uh, we had to take certain measures, namely in the pandemic, which is what we're going to hear now, a series of initiatives that although Fiocruz is not uh, an institution of the executive branch, it was um, uh, exemplary in uh, its actions in communities that are socially vulnerable. So I think that it's agroecology in health when we speak about healthy territories, sustainable territories, we are also talking about agroecology as a path that may present what FAO and other international organizations refer to, food systems that are resilient and sustainable. I think that in that's just an overview, and I think that my colleagues will be able to present their experiences, experiences that will prove uh, how and, and talk about how Fiocruz has dealt with food security. Oh, well, thank you, Denise. This is okay. Here you can move forward, and thank you, Denise, for your. We, uh, I think I'm just going to give the floor to Richards. Richards, I'd like to thank you. I counted, I, we are about 20 people here in this panel. As a prof teacher, I never believe that quantity is a sign of quality. So I'd like to thank uh, Valber and Denise for the invitation. Everybody who is with us now, my speech is going to share uh, an experience uh, by Fiocruz with different institutions, which is the Fiocruz plan, a public policy of food security, uh, uh, what we did in the uh, slums, in the favelas, our experience in food uh, safety. And we think about sustainable, healthy territories and to think also about surveillance, health surveillance, a reduction of vulnerabilities, namely in peripheral communities in the state of Rio de Janeiro. This is an initiative of interinstitutional articulation. I believe that this is very important to state and uh, base this and, and, and highlight this at all moments. So all the uh, these uh, institutions listed here, uh, one notes 
from a block that is associated with scientific associations, the Brazilian Association of Collective Health, uh, universities, the Federal University of Rio, the state of Rio de Janeiro, the Catholic University, um, the city hall, uh, the city council of the city of Rio de Janeiro, uh, the Ministry of Health, and especially based, those based in the favelas, in the slums. Uh, what's the context of all this? Uh, initially, and especially considering a context of greater vulnerability in slums, uh, this uh, group of uh, civil society and institutions and organizations, they came up with a plan of fighting uh, COVID-19 in the uh, favelas. Uh, the inequalities in the periphery and in the favelas would uh, facilitate the uh, uh, progression of the pandemic. Uh, given a greater population density or very uh, uh, very frail sanitation uh, systems. Um, so this whole set of indicators that we identified and raised at the time enabled the preparation of a plan to face and deal with the pandemic in Rio de Janeiro's slums. I don't know whether everyone here knows, but approximately in Rio de Janeiro, the last data are from our census in 2010. In the city of Rio, 22% of the population live in slums. When we think of the state, this uh, figure is of about 13% compared to the two census, 2000 and 2010, there was an advance, an increase in the number of people living in favelas. So we will probably get about 27, 28% of the population in the city of Rio de Janeiro live in the slums, in the favelas. Denise has already said 33 million Brazilians live in a situation of hunger and the response of civil society were of the essence, namely in the slums in the city of Rio de Janeiro. Crisis uh, groups and groups of solidarity, and I could uh, list a series of experiences in this sense. With that realization, we understood that the best constitution after a donation of the Rio de Janeiro City Council of 20 million reais, we should uh, forward this resource to civil society so they could implement actions to mitigate um, the effect of the pandemic in the favelas. We made a public call, a call bids the, the co pro projects coordinators here, Leonija, she is from the West uh, region, an area in Rio de Janeiro that uh, and is composed by uh, many different neighborhood, neighborhoods. And they donated uh, over one ton of food to these populations. Initiatives such as this one make up this uh, group of actions. They were eight uh, program areas that range from uh, observing all WHO actions and also in mental health uh, and education and remote uh, education. But most interesting link, interestingly is that this uh, amount of resources, we have already uh, forwarded uh, 6.4 million reais to civil society in 75 favelas in eight cities in the state of Rio de Janeiro, and 80% of these funds was uh, geared toward projects uh, regarding nutritional and food safety. This is significant because civil society identified that the main demand to face uh, the effects of the pandemic uh, was to act directly on combating, on fighting hunger. Approximately in this period, in one year of actions, especially for actions within the favela, 150,000 people have been have benefited because that acts in reducing inequalities, 
with a focus on nutritional and food safety. As I pointed out, uh, at this point, uh, the organizations in partnership with Fiocruz enabled uh, the donation of 250 tons of food and another 45,000 um, meals from community kitchens. These 45,000 meals were distributed to families and uh, they reached almost 100,000 people. Uh, data that is very significant in this is that 30% of uh, people working in these projects really bet on agroecological partnerships, family farming, and in building community kitchens, solidary kitchens, as a strategy to mitigate the pandemic's effects in addition to um, community vegetable gardens in the favelas. They're not extremely new when we see in the bibliography in the, in the literature, we know that there are community kitchens in the end of the 80s in Brazil, but they became especially significant as of 2018 and were expanded in the pandemic. Uh, in this strategy of solidary uh, kitchen, uh, we, uh, Fiocruz helps and maintains eight community kitchens in uh, the state of Virginia, we donated 300,000 hairs, which is a very low figure when we think of the size of this kind of articulation. But this enabled that uh, meals cost uh, an average six hairs and 64 cents. This is significant. The cost of a meal in the city of Rio de Janeiro in August is of 47 reais and 50 cents. The possibility of building community kitchens and this articulation with the public power and civil society enabled the production of meals at a much lower cost than the average of uh, the cost of the meals in the city of Rio de Janeiro. Meals, these 30% uh, of these meals are agroecological meals. And I'd like to close by pointing out some points that to me seem very important and relevant in this articulation. First of all, acknowledging this experience of partnership with civil society as an action that is closely linked to social technologies, health technologies, in order to reduce hunger and fighting poverty, namely in the slums. It is important to point out that the management in on site shared among civil society and public institutions such as Pio Cruz and different organizations or, or like public universities, the support of uh, members uh, of the City Council of Rio de Janeiro enabled a new arrangement of articulation and as a governance structure for us to think about these processes of partnership and how to implement an articulation with civil society is essential as a methodology for governance methodology. And it's important to observe in these experiences how it was possible to reorganize uh, production processes, betting on solidarity solidarity as a central brand for the creation of this public policy and a characteristic of innovating articulation uh, among these different players. And it's important to point out the strategy of local governance as a possibility of thinking governance strategies associated to the expansion of uh, community articulation. We know that the biggest difficulty we have in participation globally is how we can involve and extend the community articulation. Perhaps the answer is to do it together with the civil society. And the previous panel is very relevant in that respect by donating and working collectively. And something else that is uh, essential for us is how through this initiative we can articulate directly with the SDGs, 
since the very first one, two, three, fighting hunger, including health and all the SDGs, 10, 11, and 12, associated with uh, reducing inequalities, the cities, and new production models, and especially number 17. SDG 17 is par about partnership networks. I believe here we have a positive experience to be tapped on, which brings in a strong message saying that public institutions, civil society, governments, congressmen together can produce initiatives, quality initiatives that will bring about more engagement at lower cost and also with less impact on society. We have here the QR code with more information and let's go on talking. Thank you, Richels, for this uh, very important contribution. Let's now go on to Leonardo. Thanking you for your participation representing the observatory at Bocaina. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Hello. Thank you for staying, holding on strongly till the end. I'm the coordinator of governance and management at the Observatory of Healthy Sustainable Territories of Bokaina. Our observatory that we care we call OTSS is the institutional program of Fio Cruz. And it's been built together with the traditional forum of communities of Angra dos Reis and Paratuba. And uh, it is built in this partnership. And the group is shared between a Fio Cruz staff and a representative of this forum. And we are including researchers from the academia and researchers from the community. And the structure is part of the territory, the demands that come out of the territory, and all constructs that come from the territory. It's a very broad area. It encompasses 140 traditional communities in seven municipalities from the southern area uh, of uh, Son Rio and north of Sao Paulo. It is Quilombola communities uh, and the coastal areas and indigenous communities. They are very vulnerable communities. It is on the border between the two largest cities in the, the country. And uh, to complement the previous talk, that they are acting strongly in the urban environment, in the favelas, in the slums. And we work with the traditional communities in the rural environment with a group of communities that are extremely vulnerable. On the other hand, they have organized themselves lately to try and claim their rights and fight for them organizing themselves strongly in the forum of traditional communities. When we built this partnership back in uh, 2009, we strengthened uh, a series of actions based on what the territory demanded. These communities depend basically on their territories to ensure their rights to maintaining their customs and their food security because they get out of the territory and the ancestral relationship with it, their own food security. So when they form themselves as a forum, as a political movement, and the forum is a social political movement, they were formed basically with the purpose of ensuring the right to their territories. If you know the area, it's one of the most beautiful in the world with the uh, huge appeal for real estate developments. It is the target of large developers. The exploration of the pre-salt is there 
in the area. We have two nuclear plants. The third is being built now. We also have a whole set of high-level luxury condos. So the vector of capital attraction is huge, deterritorializing, displace, forcing, and making pressure towards displacement of these people. And that threatens their food security. It is in this context that this partnership with Fuel Cruise was formed to form the observatory. And it is in this context that the form of traditional communities established a series of uh, agendas to fight for. In the dialogue with Fuel Cruise and the, in the maturing process of the political movement, the forum realized that ensuring the right to the territory did not depend upon a fight, a direct fight for the territory, but rather the fight for the maintenance of their right to maintain their customs, their traditional customs. And for that, they needed to make pressure on politicians. So they established a series of political agendas. Amongst them, traditional tourism, where the traditional communities are the leaders since the planning up to the delivery of these tourist services, fighting for social and environmental justice. And amongst all these rights they're claiming for, we have agroecology, agroecological production. In the observatory, we have a strong bias since we are a program that is a partnership between grassroots organizations and a research institute, we are building knowledge based on the ecology of knowledge. The dialogue amongst different types of knowledge in order to build a different type of knowledge. And that is m very apparent in the agroecology of the territory. We're working on it as a set of actions and knowledges that joins the knowledge of from scientists and the, no, the traditional knowledge, so as to build an agroecological structure that joins modern elements and traditional elements. That's at the root, and that's the, found, the baseline of my talk. Since then, we've implemented different actions in the territory. We implemented it. Initially, it was only Angra dos Reis, Paraty, and Ubatuba. More recently, after demands from the territory, demands for s concrete projects, we extended it from Mangaratiba up to Ilha Bela in Sao Paulo in articulation with different movements that represent these uh, traditional communities. In the observatory, we built the Social Technologies Incubator. And it tries to work strongly on the idea of agroecology based on the local actions. The incubator tries to understand and map actions in all areas, agroecology, community-based tourism, ecological sanitation, and uh, small-scale fishing. It tries to consider different endeavors and initiatives, structuring them and strengthening them so that it may assure food sovereignty and income based on commercialization. We've been doing this in different areas, and we built our methodology together with the local communities. The incubator is not made up of experts only. We have several representatives from the three different native peoples, and they articulate with us, helping us build this process of incubators. Several of them involve agroecology. Agroecology is one of the main activities of our incubator because communities practice agriculture. They have been doing so for a long time. Since the very first public policies back in 2004 aimed at agroecology, 
in the debates, this issue was maturing. In mid-2000, these communities implemented this sort of project. Then the, the projects lost strength and power, and now the observatory, based on the incubator, has been promoting more and more this type of discussion with a revival of this topic based on the strengthening of communities actions. I'm going to present four initiatives we've been acting on strongly, supporting agroecology and food sovereignty in the territory. So we have territorial agroecological plans. Here, together with the communities, we built plans that will enable agroecological production and marketing. Then we have the local traditional communities being included in the PNAE, the National Program for School Meals. Here, the government purchases produce to be included and used in the school meals. Traditional communities were kept apart from the process and we included them in this discussion. Also, we organized during the pandemic a program serving more than 700 families delivering several food baskets. And now we have with been working with another area of Fiocruz and the vice presidency of Fiocruz to strengthen agroecology in the different territories. So basically, this territorialized agroecological plan is a methodology built to strengthen in the communities the idea of producing ecologically. It involves the communities. We involve communities in the discussion based on the form of traditional communities. Just to give you an idea, today in the observatory, we have 56, I believe, community researchers, if I'm not mistaken, 56. They're coming from these communities we're working with or the neighboring communities, which allows them to spread the knowledge. We've been mapping this through oral experiences and the different agroecological systems that are there and uh, spread the agroecological systems. In doing so, we've been organizing better production. And it's been allowing us to market, be it through PNI or through agroecological fairs. We organized one in Paraty, there's another one in Caraguatatuba. So we've been building plans to strengthen agroecology in different communities. There's one in Campinho. And by the way, what's interesting is that we join different sectors of society. Some are fishermen from artisanal fishing. Some are farmers. We're involving 70% of the community in Campinho, for instance in another village, Itachi, and in the Quilombo da Fazenda, and in Almada Beach, we have a series of agroecological plans in action. So we have the plan design, and then its implementation. Well, I've spoken about this already. So we always try to work with the three different peoples without privileging any of them. Panay is important. Based on the plans, we gained scale in production. Of course, these communities were already producing in the past, but we organized them, and in doing so, we helped them. Based on a research we implemented, that's the our Achilles heel how can you market, how can could they market their production? They didn't know how to. So Penai was a way in which we organized everything for them, including 
the whole bureaucracy and the accounting. We have 14 families in the territory that are placing their products with Binai. Another recent program was the Cuidar e Resistir. Caring is resisting. As soon as the pandemic started, the traditional communities closed themselves to the world. Some of them did so on their own initiative. Several tourists wanted to come in, but the communities decided not to allow them to. They live off tourism, especially those on the beach, on the coast. But all the others, the be it mass tourism or community-based tourism. And after the pandemic, they had a serious, a, prob a serious problem with food insecurity. So the forum, with the support of the observatory, organized itself and managed to raise donations and funds and started delivering information as well as basic food baskets, masks, always trying to inform them, saying this is not just donation, this is not just aid. We need to raise your awareness. We're only helping, we're only assisting because the government cannot reach you at this time. And the campaign was so successful because on one hand, it strengthened the links between the forum and these areas. On the other hand, it raised their uh, awareness and also the forum to a certain extent, prioritized the delivery and the inclusion of agroecological produce in the food baskets. So the community, since they were closed, they started planting again. And uh, they're still doing so even after the end of the pandemic. So halfway through, Petrobras came in with a significant resource, more than two million seven hundred reais, and we were doing something very humble for a set of 400 families. With these funds, we expanded the aid to 7,000 families, prioritizing the purchase of agroecological produce. And we had several good results, especially the motivation to go back to Plant, planting after, so there was a revival of farming in the area. Here we see the delivery of food by the community itself. And then there's another project, the project called ARA. It involves three sectors of fuel crews. Here, through this project, we've been strengthening farming through agroecological territorialized plants by articulating agroecology and artisanal fishing. So if you go to a restaurant, you will eat the fish that was fished through artisanal fishery. So you articulate actions in the territory. So basically, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to try to play my role as a moderator. So we start off from a very important concept of uh, food safety and uh, food sovereignty to our institution that is playing the role, an important role during the pandemic. We uh, fought for life. And uh, we played a very uh, unique role. Two clear examples that our public institution that uh, is or, or, or has a classical technical scientific uh, role and uh, plays an important social uh, becomes a social actor with an important role in all these communities in a work of uh, articulation uh, and uh, to work together and generate uh, 
a set of important actions that will be a, an important legacy, not only for the present moment, but for the future of significant learning points. Our time is way, we, we're way over our schedule. And I'd just like to thank once again for all of those who remained on behalf of all of us here. We'd like to thank your attendance. But there is one question that remained. What do, do the cities, what do the governments, what can the rulers do with this? Uh, the name uh, role of the forum is to discuss the strategies that the challenges that are presented here how to act, what, what can be the main action or the effect that these cities can think jointly of to be prepared to face this major issue that we face, hunger. So how do you see this? Are our examples, uh, can they be reproduced? What else? How could you just make a brief comment and in two words, each one of you, what actions could we have uh, or the city could have in this contest? I think, I think that what we do at a local level affects the global level. This is the main learning the lesson I learned working in favelas, in slums, or in uh, religious territories of African uh, influence, indigenous uh, communities, in rural areas, this connectivity with nature, which agroecology teaches us always, is what is at stake. And we see its consequences if we have a perspective that I act here and what I do here, I may interfere in Africa or in Asia, anywhere in the world. I believe that if we bear this in mind, we may find alternatives. And some uh, sessions that I listen into this afternoon attest to this. And we see and hear the experiences of other uh, countries. But we have to bear this in mind and be aware of this, that wherever, regardless of where I am, I uh, may uh, have, you know, my actions will have an influence elsewhere. I think there are two tracks here that are important. Uh, how Fio Cruz uh, faced uh, and dealt with uh, the pandemic in the favelas and the community responses to this pandemic. First of all, directly associated to the city is to understand the integration of rural and urban field and city. We can't think of the city and the responses of the urban without uh, taking into account this uh, territorial network. And this is important for family uh, farming or family agriculture and uh, different uh, integrality. And another uh, line of thought is that when there is the integration of participation, we can see the community response to enhance and lead to collaboration networks uh, between the stakeholders of how we, you know, the, the, the pretty name we want to give to the process to articulate uh, uh, multiple stakeholders, institutional or social ones. And that is how we're going to effectively uh, <laughs> enable these more potent. And this, we brought a direct example here when we bring everyone together, we are able to do more and at a lower cost, I believe. Uh, if we have to explain uh, from a financial point of view because numbers are important and money and what you have, what have you. And we can even impact the parliament. The first uh, 
uh, law in Brazil for a direct uh, contribution of money to a favela. So we affected the favela, and the favela is affected too. So just uh, bringing everybody together to think about collective actions and solutions. I'm going to try to be very brief. I won't repeat, but if I were to say two words, two words are too much too few, right, two ideas. I'm not going to talk about the only for Brazil. Rebuild public policies rebuild for uh, food security and food sovereignty. And the second idea is that within the building of public policies or reconstruction of public policies, communities, whether they be the favelas of, of, of uh, African uh, descent and uh, ancestry or from their f forming or in, uh, formation or reformulation as in our case. And the third idea, to do this, be able to do this with within networks. I think these are three essential messages. If we do not rebuild the uh, public uh, policies, regardless of how strong the communities are, we won't be successful. Well, I'd like to thank Denise, Richards, Denado, and uh, thank you all for having remained here and all those that are still attending on behalf of Fiocruz. I'd like to thank you all. Uh, thank the uh, City Hall, the organi events organizers for the opportunity to share uh, how we built this uh, and uh, the, the event in the past few days, Talita and Camila and Carolina, and the opportunity to bring to you our very simple and humble contribution. I'd like to thank you all. Good evening, and uh, I hope you all go home safely. Uh, and uh, please visit and make the most of Rio de Janeiro. It's a beautiful city and there's a lot to see. Thank you very much.